Welcome to Photo Finds. I'm your host, Kevin Yee, and this week we are not in Orlando anymore. That may look like Disney's Hollywood Studios, but it's actually Disney's California Adventure, the park next to Disneyland. And we had taken a visit out to California not too long ago, so we thought we would capture a few things which are new since our last visit. That's about a year ago, and so uh, we're going to try to capture just the things that are new. This is Buena Vista Street, which is the entrance uh, way to uh, DCA, and a lot of things are new here. Kind of a 1930s aesthetic uh, has changed things all around, including that bridge you saw there. And this being photo finds, I thought I'd point out things that are particularly um, re re remotely detailed. And here we have Candy Mountain at the end of uh, Buena Vista Street. If you look a little closer in, you see little lollipops sticking around everywhere. If you've uh, read the histories of Disneyland, you know that they were once considering a ride called Rock Candy Mountain, um, although the model looked quite a bit like this and it was just getting sick, sickly sweet in the uh, unair conditioned office, so they abandoned the idea. So this is a little bit of a tribute here. Now, Buena Vista Street includes these uh, red car trolleys, and that's um, a nice added touch of kinetics to the area, as well as the Walt and Mickey statue showing Walt when he arrives in Hollywood. That's what we're supposed to be seeing in the revised DCA. Now, when you step foot in, coming in the morning, you'll likely see that um, the, red, uh, the line for Fast Pass for Radiator Springs Racers stretches down uh, that Hollywood Boulevard area. And on our day, uh, we saw that the racers will not even open until noon, which meant that uh, the Fast Pass was concluded a little bit earlier. They've been having some trouble with Radiator Springs racers, but uh, we'll take a little closer look at that in a minute. This is the new section of the park, Cars Land, a view from one side. And as you can see, they've uh, really done a lot of um, placemaking to make it feel like a real place, including that mountain range in the back. And we'll see a lot more of that. Here it is again from the side. So you get a sense of the scale of this as you walk through. Um, you really can see that it stretches off in the distance. The, the way they've done the force perspective here is just uh, out of the ballpark good. Uh, and um, I think it's one of the very best things they've done in terms of making it feel like a real place, um, possibly second only to the volcano in Tokyo Disney Sea. Uh, I enjoyed this detail as well. They have a little bit of a finder guide showing some of the features of the uh, the very landscape you're looking at and in the distance. Although of course the the features they're talking about here are are fake, right? This is model 61, 62 um, for cars that form that mountain range in the background. Little details like the blinking red uh, yellow light and the one intersection of the street are adhered to. They've got um, different sections here are dedicated to shops and then uh, also to uh, small rides. And we'll get to a few of those in a few moments. Flo's Cafe is an eatery, as you might imagine. Uh, and then the Cozy Cone Motel here has actual cones that you can go visit and buy certain food items from. I enjoyed this detail from the Cozy Cone that uh, if you peek inside that unused space in the middle, they've actually gone ahead and um, decorated it as though it were uh, in use, including this little detail. If we zoom in right here, there's Buzz Lightyear climbing out from underneath one of the cones. In Radiator Springs, they have these cars, cars, come out every so often, and they're uh, things you can meet and greet, or at least take pictures with as they roll around, they're actual vehicles, and we saw a few different kinds of them, there's not just the one, and that was real interesting placemaking that I was glad to see them do. This is one of those smaller rides, uh, Luigi's, and this is um, uh, kind of like the Flying Saucers concept, if you're familiar with that from the 1950s in Disneyland, although these, um, these move a lot slower and uh, they have, they're getting mixed reviews. Some people find that it's not worth a long wait. Now this is uh, Mater's Junkyard, and these vehicles um, travel around this swivel track here, a little bit like an extended figure eight, uh, and as they whip around corners, the back end really whips you forward. And so uh, these are fun little um, vehicles, and I urge you to take those in if you get a chance. The line's not nearly as long. I enjoyed this humorous touch as well, where Mater's Petting Zoo is a tiny little cow-like um, tractor that you can't tip over, of course. I'll look at what the land looks like in the nighttime. They've done a great job of uh, lighting up that background mountains um, and the neon in the foreground and all of the, the various uh, restaurants and shops uh, really gives it a sense that this is um, an actual place. It feels like you've stepped into the movie. Uh, and let's keep in mind this building as well. I'll show you something in a few minutes that looks a little bit like this um, from Radiator Springs. A couple shots here first of what the, uh, the outside of 
the facades look like before we step into the racers. Now this is the signature attraction. It's like Test Track and as you see it does feature a single rider line. Often that's only 30 or 40 minutes long even though the main standby line might be a lot closer to um, two hours, sometimes even three hours. Now these pictures were taken um, right when the thing opened up and mid-morning one day when it was scheduled to open later. So you're not going to see a lot of people in these early pictures. Just thought I'd take you through the queue so you could see a little bit more of the placemaking and uh, the fact that it feels a little bit like a desert, the various kinds of lines. I like this detail as well. When you're standing in line, you'll find an actual spring shaped like a radiator, presumably giving Radiator Springs its name. Uh, you wind your way through some of these houses, and between the houses you'll see some more of that um, fake cactus stuff that gives the area really its feel. And there are the cars. The racers themselves are cars cars, meaning they have these eyes on them. Uh, and they have different kinds, different colors, and they have different uh, personalities really to them. Now the first part of the ride, um, and I'm going to confess there's going to be some spoilers here, so zoom ahead if you don't want the spoilers, is kind of more of a lazy travel around uh, the countryside. The music does this too. Uh, and then shortly after that, you wind your way around a corner, go down into a dark tunnel, and then Mac almost hits you. So there's a moment of surprise. And the sheriff pops out from behind a billboard. These are all moving cars with animated uh, lips and mouths and so forth, uh, telling you to slow down. You're not racing yet. Mater comes out and helps you. Uh, situate yourself within the town. He drives backwards and you see a couple of them but then you stumble across this guy by accident after tipping over some cows and so you zoom away down into the downtown part of uh, Radiator Springs which of course you just left outside. Here it is again inside the ride and this time it's nighttime whether it's nighttime outside or not. Now Sally and Lightning McQueen tell you you're going to be racing. You might go to the left and get Ramones um, and or you might go to the right, I'm sorry, you might go to the left and get Luigi's to get your tires changed um, into um, white wall side tires or you might go to the right and go into Ramones and have the um, car body painted and that's a uh, kind of a trick that, that looks a little familiar to those of you who know Test Track well. Doc Hudson will then give you some final words of encouragement and then you and the other car you're going to be racing against, that was that split was all about, um, meet up with these folks here, the tire change guys, and then off you go on the race. Now you're competing side by side in the normal slot car kind of test track way. Uh, and you go up and down a couple of hills and around a corner. Now it's not predetermined who's going to win. Um, one time the left side won and one time I saw the right side win. Um, and there's a lot of back and forth as you're going through it. The track is not nearly as long as Epcot's high speed track, um, but it is fun and it goes over uh, pretty well, I think. And then you end up in taillight caverns. You can see the jokes there um, with Lightning McQueen and Mater giving you some final words of encouragement. Now, I had called your attention earlier to the Radiator Springs town because I also took a side trip uh, to Seligman, which is uh, in Arizona. And uh, it is the acknowledged uh, inspiration or sort of inspiration in some ways, John Lasseter said, for cars. This is a city right next to the interstate, uh, but the interstate doesn't go through it. And so it's a city that's seen a lot of decline um, since the interstate has been nearby. People no longer take Route 66. Now you won't find any actual familiar structures. They don't have a, a cozy cone motel here or anything. And a lot of the structures were built um, from the movie as well as in the um, Cars Land were built from places that you find elsewhere in Route 66, all over the country. So it's not that the structures will be familiar, but sort of the feeling of the town will be a little bit familiar. It feels a little bit sad as you drive through the town and you see some attempt to cash in on the kitschiness of Route 66. This is kind of a general store on this side and uh, this one is uh, one of my favorites. It has kind of little signs and um, sundries and tries to be historic. It's like that uh, Lizzie shop I was pointing out to you earlier. Uh, and then on top of all of that they've got cars out front that are kind of giving um, homage to what you see in cars. So here's a tow truck that looks a little bit like Mater with Mater teeth and a police car that looks kind of like the police car and I guess that's Lightning McQueen not really decorated as such. Uh, despite it being the uh, official inspiration for cars, Seligman doesn't seem to know it because they don't do anything about Pixar in their advertisement here. And there's a lot of sections of town that are just kind of um, run down. There's a residential section that's just one major street and the residential section is at one end of it. Um, the big attraction here appears to be the Roadkill Cafe with a great name for a cafe like that. How can you go wrong? Then you're off to the Exxon, which is now closed, and then it's back to the interstate. So uh, if you get the chance to check out Seligman, Arizona, um, it could be worth your, your brief visit um, just to see a place where cars was made, um, provided an inspiration for cars. Now just a couple of pictures of the Little Mermaid, which is coming to um, 
the Magic Kingdom very soon, and it's uh, largely meant to be a clone, I think, of the DCA attraction. This is the new hair for Ariel. She used to have her hair in a bit of a snow cone bun or an um, ice, cream, ice cream cone bun, and that was complained about online, so uh, they redid her hair. Just a few shots of what awaits us. Uh, and then we also took in the Carthay Circle restaurant. This is new at the end of the um, Buena Vista Street. And as you can see, it's uh, laid out fairly opulently, some posh surroundings. Uh, it's got that uh, fairly pricey menu that goes with it. Uh, these are some of what the food items look like. These are some pork sliders there and some uh, tacos. Both those were very good, actually, as well as little hamburger sliders. Um, just to give you a sense for what the portions look like at the Carthay Circle Theater and uh, sort of the rich gold trappings. It, looks, it reminded me a little bit of uh, what it looks like inside the Brown Derby at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Around the corner in DCA, there's just a lot new in DCA. This is the former Millionaire Building in the background, who wants to be a millionaire, now used for dancing with Disney, and that's really just a dance club um, for kids to dance along with the music and the videos and spots for people to uh, curl up on benches uh, around the sides. Just enjoy the air conditioning. Around the corner from there and in front of Monsters Incorporated is the Mad Tea Party, which is an outdoor dance party. As you can see, nothing much happens in the daytime. Look to the nighttime, however, and everything changes in terms of lighting as well as how many people there are. Uh, and they really line up a lot of exciting bands for this uh, Mad Tea Party thing. Get the atmosphere going with fog and other effects. The Mulholland uh, Madness roller coaster has become a goofy sky school. With it's got its own theme now, and as you can see, new costumes. And the theme is a uh, goofy teaching you how to fly. And so all of the various elements of this wild mouse coaster take on now instructions for how to turn or how to nose dive. And I thought that was a nice touch and an interesting way to retheme it, at least a minimal sense. And you may have heard about the World of Color show there, and they have a new feature called Glow with the Show. If you buy these $24 or uh, $23 uh, mouse ears, they will synchronize with the show a little bit, but uh, not a lot of people are doing it, so the effect is a little bit muted. Part of the ongoing makeover, the Mission Tortilla Factory has now become Ghirardelli, so if you step inside, it's largely just a shop selling Ghirardelli things like you might find at Downtown Disney in Florida. I did enjoy this backdrop, however. There's two sides of it, and there's a lot of uh, moving animations. It reminded me a little bit of the Circle Vision pre-show you saw at Disneyland 10 or 15 years ago. We're going to take a quick visit over to Disneyland. These are the entrance gates. And you know you're at Disneyland rather than Orlando when the person in line in front of you is Kirsten Dunst. So we saw her um, up close, and I didn't uh, really take a picture of her. I didn't want her to feel like she was being chased by paparazzi, but this is, in fact, her. And you can see, in fact, her name says Kirsten across the back. She was there visiting with friends. Uh, the Jolly Holiday Bakery has taken over what was once annual pass holder processing. The Matterhorn Climbers are back, and in fact the Matterhorn itself has new cars. These are a little hard to get in and out of, but uh, they're not so bad. And since we were here, we thought we would take in, let's see, raise your hand if you know where it is we're going here. This is Club 33. This is the uh, glass elevator that's famous, or you can take the stairs up. Club 33, if you don't know it, is a members-only club. Um, unless your member is a friend, they can make a reservation for you. It's a highly expensive place. It's exclusive. Um, most people cannot get in. They only take a limited number. Uh, and um, this, in this case, was a buffet lunch. Uh, and as you can see, it's upstairs above the Cafe Orleans. So it's upstairs, New Orleans. Uh, and since we were there, we thought we would show you again what the food looks like. Um, this is the pasta dish. The previous was um, obviously shrimp and uh, um, a fish dish. Uh, this is the rather famous uh, bathrooms. The toilets have these antique pole handles. Everyone likes to go in there and have a look at those. And then I thought I would show you what some of the desserts look like. Take our way through those since those are included. This is that, um, that main dining area without people in it. Another view from the side. It goes over toward the Blue Bayou area. And then uh, after our mints, I thought I would show you this photograph, which is hanging on the um, uh, a photograph of a painting hanging on one hallway done by Charles Boyer. And I really like this. Uh, this is of Walt Disney, who didn't live to see the club opened, but of Walt Disney as though he were enjoying um, the club, or maybe it's meant to be Riverbell Terrace, looking out over his Disneyland, his steamer going by, having a cup of coffee and reading the newspaper. And then the thought just made me happy that Walt Disney enjoyed his park. One last thing to show you in Club 33, uh, a second dining room is called the Trophy Room because they have trophies of animals in it. 
has uh, chandeliers with a microphone in it. Let's see if we can zoom in here so you can see this microphone. The original thought was that the servers could eavesdrop on the people eating below and then anticipate their needs and sort of magically appear with whatever they were talking about. And the same uh, Disney showmanship is on display here with some of these stuffed animals. This uh, vulture was wired for movement, actually. It became an audio animatronics. It doesn't do anything anymore. Just a couple of quick things around Disneyland. I hadn't noticed this before in the Magic Shop, where Steve Martin once worked, is a signed photo of Steve Martin. Perhaps it's been there all along, I just never noticed it. And I never had a chance to take in this Osimo, uh, which is a walking robot from uh, Honda, as you see. The entire interventions in Disneyland is uh, likely on the chopping block for a new e-ticket. And since we were in Southern California, we took in Transformers the Ride. This is likely to be coming to Universal in Florida. They haven't announced it as such, uh, but that made me more interested to see what Transformers the Ride was like. And the answer is, it's like Superman, um, I'm sorry, it's like Spider-Man over at uh, um, the uh, Florida attraction, which is to say it combines uh, live action sets and um, 3D movie screens and, uh, and a simulator technology. It is very effective for what it did. I haven't seen the Hill Valley um, Back to the Future courthouse area since it burned down. This is the rebuilt version. Looks a little bit less like you might expect. Nor have I seen the tram tour with this Fast and the Furious stuff built into it. Uh, the King Kong stuff was new as well. Um, King Kong is uh, fighting dinosaurs in a tunnel around you rather than the old King Kong attraction which burned down as well. And I leave you with this, the image of Terminator 2 in Hollywood, uh, which is the rumored location of the Harry Potter expansion when it comes to Universal Studios Hollywood. Thanks for sticking in for such a long update this time around. We'll get back to Orlando soon. And thanks as always for checking by, and we'll catch you next time.